there's so much potential left inside of you and that potential is not going to be actualized if you stay in your damn comfort zone. And if you're listening to this podcast, you're listening to it because you are trying to get out of your comfort zone in some sort of way. Instead of it feeling uncomfortable to live on your comfort zone, it feels uncomfortable to not be uncomfortable. The reason why your comfort zone exists is because there's still parts of our brain that are 2 million years old. There's the amygdala, which is the fear part of our brain. It creates these fears and it's the oldest part of our brain. It's the reptilian part of our brain, as they call it. And you realize consciously as an adult right now in this conscious moment, you realize that if you get out of your comfort zone and go start this business of your dreams that you're not going to die. You understand that. You consciously understand that. But it doesn't mean that your subconscious, that the reptilian parts of your brain don't fear going out of your comfort zone. And the reason why is because they think, okay, I'm going to step out of my comfort zone. If I'm out of my comfort zone, there's a possibility that I could die. Now, you know, if you start a business, you're not going to die. But there's a part of you deep down inside of your brain that thinks if I step out of this comfort zone, AKA do something that I've never done before, do something that scares me, that there's not death attached to it. Your brain doesn't know that. And so you have to realize that if you're not getting out of your comfort zone as much as possible, as much as possible, your dreams are going to die there, right? Your dreams die inside of your comfort zone because Nobody has a dream that's inside of their comfort zone. If you're sitting there and you're thinking about your biggest dream in your life, what is it? I want you to think about that for a second. It's something that is probably so far out of your comfort zone that it makes you a little bit uncomfortable, right? It does. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But what I want you to realize is this. Comfort kills ambition. Your comfort kills your ambition. Perfect example. If I'm sitting on my couch playing around on Instagram, looking through and scrolling through, watching, you know, reels and TikTok videos and all of that stuff, it's going to kill my ambition because I'm comfortable. It's easy. It's not hard. I'm just kind of sitting in my comfort zone. No big deal. But if I stay there, it's going to kill all of the ambition that I have in this world. And so what I always remember is, is something that one of my very first managers told me. One of my very first mentors used to always say, hey, Rob, you're either green and growing or you're brown and dying. There is no in between. You're either green and growing or you're brown and dying. And so I'm constantly asking myself, am I green and growing? Am I, am I forcing myself out of my comfort zone? Am I growing myself mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually? Or am I just kind of staying stagnant? And you've heard me say this before if you listen to the podcast for a while. I consciously say the word stagnant on purpose because I'm a very visual person. I know most people are visual. About 60 to 70% of people in the world are visual. So when I say the word stagnant, Immediately what pops inside of my head is a dirty, gross pond, creek that's not moving and it's got a film over it. There's mosquitoes and there's bugs and there's gross stuff that's growing inside of it, bacteria, all of that. And so I like to think of my life as I don't ever want to be stagnant. I always want to be moving forward because you're either progressing or you're regressing. That's it. There's no in between. And what I want you to realize with all of the changes that have been happening in the world right now, if you're trying to just wait until things go back to normal, I promise you this, you're going to be left behind. Some of the biggest thinkers in our world are popping up right now. Some of the biggest companies that are going to change the world are popping up right now. And usually when there's big shifts in the world, like there has been over the past year to 18 months, that's when the people who come out and change the world are found. That's when they show up. And so if you're sitting and just waiting for things to go back to normal, I promise you this, you're going to be left behind. What you should be doing right now is consciously going, you know what? I'm going to push myself out of my comfort zone every single day. I need to keep moving forward. You need to start the day leaning forward. And I said this a few months ago, about four or five months ago, is is when you think about how you wake up every single morning. If you think about all the actions that you take every single morning, it should be consciously leaning forward. What do I mean by that? Is you can sit back and you can wait for the world to happen. You can wait for things to change. And that's kind of like, you know, if if you're just waiting for things to happen, that means that you're on the defense. That means that you're on your back foot. You're kind of leaning back a little bit. For those of you guys that can't see me or listen to the podcast, you're leaning back. Just, uh, I hope, I hope nothing happens. I hope I can just kind of make it through this time until things go back to normal. I hope I just react and put out fires. No, 
That's not what you should be doing right now. Right now, you should be consciously making yourself as uncomfortable as possible so that you can grow at a higher level and a faster level than anybody else that's out there. Because the people that are just waiting until things go back to normal are gonna wake up in six months or a year or two years or whatever it is when things go quote unquote back to normal and they're gonna realize, oh sh I'm really far behind. Why? Because people were doubling down and doubling down and doubling down over the past year, 18 months, however much longer this could possibly go. You've got to start your day leaning forward. So I want you to consciously think of this on a daily basis. Are you kind of leaning back, just like reacting, taking what the world gives you, reacting to it? Or are you leaning forward? So are you on the defense, as I was just explaining, or are you on offense going, you know what? I'm not going to wait for the world to go back to normal. You know what? I don't care what the world's going to look like in six months or a year because I am going to create the world that I want to live in. I'm not going to wait to see what the world looks like. I'm going to create it because the world is changing so much right now. You cannot stay the same. You can't stay the same right? Now is the time for massive growth, for massively pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, growing physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially in your business. It's not the time to sit on the sideline and just hope that things go back to normal. No, now is your time to wake up, to step up and start to kick some ass. So why are you here? Why are you on this planet? Now's the time to figure it out. You're needed more than you ever have been, right? Why are you here? How can you help? Those are two questions to start you off on the right foot, to start you off thinking how you can go out and do something good. Because if you're demotivated right now, I'm gonna be honest with you, the reason why, I find lots of times the reason why people become demotivated is because they're only thinking about themselves. You're thinking too much about yourself, you're thinking too much about your what, what you want to do versus thinking, you know what? With all of the stuff that's happening right now, how can I help? How can I step up? How can I create something powerful in the upcoming months, in the upcoming year? How can I create something powerful? The people who become the richest entrepreneurs are the people who can solve the world's problems. Now, I'm not saying you have to solve every, everybody's problem right now like that. You don't have to do that. Maybe you want to. That's a beautiful thing. But you don't have to. So it's up to you. What is it that you want to do? What is it that you want to create? What is it that you're trying to create in this world? It's something important for you to think about and for you to figure out. But a lot of times, if you're feeling demotivated, is because number one, you're stuck in your comfort zone and comfort kills ambition. It's hard to be ambitious when you're just sitting around doing the same thing over and over again. And number two, maybe you're thinking too much about yourself. Maybe what you should do is you should think about how you can make a change for the world. You know, one of my favorite phrases is be ashamed to die until you've scored some victory for humanity. So what's the victory that you need to claim that you need to score for humanity. And the beautiful thing about it is, and I wanna explain this to be very, very, uh, very clear in the way that I explain this. Just because of the fact that you might be feeling like sometimes you're taking a step back before you're taking a step forward doesn't mean that you're failing, right? So the way I always think of it is like Tarzan, right? Let's say that you're Tarzan and you're in the jungle and you're at point A where you currently are and you look across the jungle and you go, all right, I've gotta get all the way to the other side of that jungle. So what do you do? You can only hold on to one branch at a time, right? So when you go from one branch, you got to get onto the other one and let go in order to move forward. Well, if Tarzan's going from one side of the jungle to the other side of the jungle, you have to realize he's not going to go forward, 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 forward with every single vine that he, gra he, he grabs. So maybe, you know, he goes for the first one. It's a little bit forward. And then he looks around and he's like, well, which one's next? The next one might actually be just a pivot to the other side. So now he's doesn't move forward at all, but he moves from one side to the other side. Okay. Well, that's still movement. That's still moving. Even if it's not in the right direction, it's still moving because sometimes in order to go to the next one, you have to move to the side to get to the one that's in front. And sometimes to get to the one that's in front, you've got to go backwards a little bit to get to the one that's in front. But ultimately it doesn't matter if you're taking side steps. It doesn't matter if you're taking back steps. It doesn't matter if you're taking forward steps. All that matters is that these steps that you're taking are going towards the path that you want. Knowing Tarzan, he's not going to be able to hit every single vine moving forward. Some of them are going to have to go to the side. Some of them are going to have to go a little bit behind because when you go behind, well, then you can reach the one that's forward a little bit easier. So the important thing though is, is are you staying stagnant or are you keeping moving? The important thing is to keep moving, not from a place of scarcity, not from a place of fear, because I know that can happen. I get it where you can come from a place of scarcity and place of fear and think, 
I gotta keep moving, man. I gotta keep moving. I gotta keep moving because, because you know, I'm afraid of what the world's gonna be. No, I'm not talking about moving forward and keeping moving because you're afraid of what the world could possibly be. I'm talking about moving forward because you want to change the freaking world because you know the impact that you can have because you know that there's so much potential left inside of you and that potential is not going to be actualized if you stay in your damn comfort zone. Your potential is going to be actualized when you get out of your comfort zone. You push yourself and you say, you know what? This isn't comfortable. Life isn't comfortable. This thing that I'm doing isn't comfortable every single day, but I'm on the offense. I'm on the offense. I'm on the offense. And I realize some of you guys are like, but, I, but I've got a family, but I've, I, I got to have some time for balance. Listen, I completely understand that. And I'm not saying take time away from your family. Balance is important, but also there's times to be in balance. There's also times to be out of balance. I don't believe that this is a time to be out of balance. Now, once again, let me be clear. I'm not saying don't spend time with your children. That's the, 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 the least of what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I don't believe that this is a time to just wait and see what happens. I don't think that this is a time to just go, you know what? I hope that this works out. No, no, no. This is possibly the best time to be a human. Now, I, I realize there's stuff happening in the world and the world will never be perfect. I, believe me, I understand that. What I'm saying is, there's so much opportunity for you around if you'll just allow yourself to look at it. If you'll stop looking at the things that are bad, if you'll stop looking at the things that are holding you back and you go, you know what? Mm, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity around me. With all of the shifting in the world, how can you find the place where you want to be? For me, you know, I, I think that the thing I've been most grateful for is, is when things started getting really wonky last year, and started getting really weird. I remember when like full lockdown happened, right? I remember thinking the phrase where they talk about uh, uh, Warren Buffett, one of the richest men in the world, says when people are greedy, be fearful. And when people are fearful, be greedy. And so I remember thinking to myself, all right, we're going on lockdown. We were in lockdown. And I thought to myself, this is probably a chance that I'll never have again in my life where we're in this lockdown and I, I consciously made the decision and said, you know what, if I'm going to impact more people, if I'm going to change the world, if I'm going to change my life, if I'm going to change everything that I do, I need to double down. And so even though I didn't know what was going to happen, I didn't know how the world would turn out. It didn't look really good when you're watching the news and you're looking at, oh my gosh, there's lockdowns, and all that stuff. I went into full on hiring mode. I said, you know what? People are losing their jobs. I'm going to hire more people. Why? Because I could probably get some really great people who want to work, who are eager to work, that also want to change the world. And so what did I do? I doubled down in my business when other people were fearful. I think there's still a lot of fear going on right now. What's going to happen? How's the world going to be? How's this going to end? I'm going to create my future, not going to wait to see what happens. So what are you going to do? What do you need to create? You know, I'm constantly thinking to myself, how can I make everything that I do more impactful for the world? How can I constantly be on the edge of my comfort zone? every single day. And I can tell you for the past year, I've been on the edge of my comfort zone pretty much every single day. And so I've been saying to myself, how can I change a podcast? How can I make it better? If you've been if you've been following me for a while, you've noticed the massive growth that, that has happened over the past two years. But more than anything else, the massive growth that's happened in the past year and the massive growth of what's happened in where, where my, my content's changed, my podcast has changed, my Instagram and Facebook and all of the amount of content that I'm putting out, the quality of the content. I've invested more money into my business than I ever have over the past year and it has paid off, but only because I wasn't allowing myself to stay in my comfort zone. I said, no, this is a time I'm going to double down. And I've got some, I'm excited to tell you guys, I've got some amazing updates coming to the podcast. Um, I can't tell you what it is. I wish I could share what it is, but now's the not, 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 not the time to tell you. We have really uh, exciting updates that's coming in the next few months of things that we're going to do, uh, things that we're going to change, uh, ways that we can serve you guys at a higher level. But ultimately, the reason why I'm saying this is because it all came from the decision last year of I'm going to double down. I'm not going to be fearful. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to push harder than I ever have. And so if you're out there, I want you to remember your comfort zone is where your dreams go to die. You're either green and, green and growing or you're brown and dying. And your comfort kills your ambition. So how can you constantly make yourself feel uncomfortable? How can you push yourself just a little bit more every single day? And when you feel like you're demotivated, realize maybe you're thinking too much about yourself. Maybe you need to get on the offense to help others. And you ask yourself the two questions I asked you a few minutes ago. Why are you here? And how can you help? What does the world need right now 
And how can you help that need? How can you put more joy into the world? How can you donate more of your energy, your time, or whatever it is? The world has never been so interesting, but also the world has never had so many opportunities out in front of you. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone. Now is the time to double down. Now is the time to show what you're worth. Now is the time to show the world what you are, who you are, and that you're not going to be afraid. So I want you to realize this. Step out of your comfort zone. Live on the edge of your comfort zone every single day. Live with intention on your front foot, on the offense. Don't play in reaction mode and on the back foot. Move towards the front foot every single day. Have a vision of what it is that you're trying to create. And I promise you, number one, you're going to impact a lot of people. And number two, you're going to change your own life and bring out the best of you. Either you do things that create the life that you want, or you allow your little inner voice to get in the way of you taking action. There's nothing else in life besides that. That's it. You either take action or you don't. And what holds you back from taking action is usually that little voice that's inside of your head. And so I'm going to teach you how to smash that little voice that's inside of your head. Why? Because everything that you want in your life is usually on the other side of all of your fears. It's on the other side of that little voice that's inside of your head that tells you that you're not good enough, that you're not smart enough, that what if people judge you? What if people tell you their opinions? What if they reject you? What if somebody says no? Everything that you want is on the other side of that voice that pops up in your head, on the other side of all of the excuses that you keep giving yourself. And if you've been listening to me for long enough, you know what I say, excuses are like buttholes. Everybody's got one and all of them stink. So if you want to give yourself an excuse, give yourself an excuse. Cool. But you've got to understand that if you put, give yourself excuses to not take action, you are going to have to live with those consequences later on in life. If you give yourself excuses why you shouldn't go to the gym, well, 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, you're going to have to live with the consequences of not going to the gym and taking care of your body. If you decide to not eat healthy for the next 10 years of your life and give yourself excuses as to why you're not eating healthy, you're going to have to live with those consequences later on in life. It's that simple. There's no other way to look at it. It's either black or it's white. There is no gray that's in between. You either get what you want in life or you don't get what you want in life. And life can be easy now and hard later, which is what I just explained, or it can be hard now and easy later. It all depends on if you're willing to put in the work and have delayed gratification versus instant gratification. What do I mean between the two of those? Delayed gratification would be, I'm going to work out five times a week knowing that your body might not change much over the next two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, month, two months, three months. And it might not be until 18 months from now until I have the body that I want. It's hard now, but it becomes easier later. Why does it become easier later? Well, because now my body's working at optimal performance. I don't have to worry about having to take a whole bunch of pills or drugs when I get older or possibly being bedridden or having knee problems or any of that stuff. So it's harder now to put in the work, but it makes life easier later on down the road. What's the flip side of that? Well, the flip side of that is, you know what? I'm gonna eat whatever it is that I want simply because it tastes good. I'm not going to work out. And in five, 10, 20 years, I might have heart issues, I might have knee issues, I might have back pain, I might be bedridden, I don't know. I might die earlier simply because I didn't take care of myself. That means that it's easy now, but it's hard later. So either you go for instant gratification, which is the simple mouth pleasure of things taste good, so I'm going to eat them anyways and not care about what, the, what it does to my body. That's instant gratification or delayed gratification. I'm not gonna eat all of the crap that I really want to, even though it tastes good, but I'm gonna show up to the gym. And so everything that you want is on the other side of that little voice inside of your head that's telling you not to do things. And Will Smith said it perfectly. He said, God put all of the amazing things in life on the other side of fear, everything that's amazing is on the other side of the fear. The only thing in your life that you should fear is fear. You should fear fear. You shouldn't fear anything else because fear is holding you back from everything amazing. Do you want to know why? The reason why is because fear is literally the boundaries of your comfort zone. And if you're listening to this podcast, you're listening to it because you are trying to get out of your comfort zone in some sort of way, right? You are. You're trying to get out of your comfort zone in some sort of way. So that shows us that you're in a comfort zone. And when you get to the edge of that comfort zone. It is only natural for your brain and your body to create fear to try to paralyze you so that you don't take action to break through your comfort zone. It's just a safety mechanism that is built into humans. So when you feel fear, that should actually be a reason to not back off. It's a physical manifestation in your body of, oh, I'm at the edge of my comfort zone. 
I need to push forward just a little bit more. Why? Because I'm not trying to stay in my comfort zone. The life I have is inside of the comfort zone. The life I want is outside of the comfort zone. Everything that you want, God put everything, that you, all the amazing things in life on the other side of fear. Don't fear anything else but fear. Fear, fear, because living life as a captive to your fear in that prison is not a life that's fully lived. You're gonna get to the end of your life and realize that you wish you would have done more. And that, I don't know about you, scares the shit out of me. That's what I'm afraid of, is not living up to my full potential. I'm afraid of getting to the end of my life and wishing that I would have done more in some sort of way. So we all have that little voice inside of us. It doesn't go away, ever. I'm here to tell you, I've been working on trying to get it to go away for 15 years. It's still there. I've just learned to stop listening to it. You've gotta to learn to dance with the fear. The fear's gonna be here, but you know, I gotta figure out instead of trying to push it away, I've gotta figure out how to tango with it. But it's the little voice that's holding you back that's saying that you're not smart enough, that you're not good enough, that you're not pretty enough, that you're not fit enough, that you're not worthy. Go back to bed and don't wake up right now. Don't work out, sleep in, scroll on Instagram for another hour, stay on the couch, eat that food just because it tastes good. Who cares about what the consequences are? It's that voice that's inside of your head. And that's the one that we're trying to smash because everything that you want is on the other side of that voice. So when you notice the voice, you have to do what it tells you, the exact opposite of what it tells you to do. You must go against the voice. That is this simple. When you feel the little fear, the little voice, I like to call it the inner bitch. When you feel the inner bitch pop up inside of your head, that is a, a an example of, okay, this is what it's telling me to do. I'm going to do the exact opposite. That's it. It's telling me to do this. It's telling me to do X. I'm going to do Y. I'm not going to listen to it because you can listen to the voice if you like to, but you don't negotiate with your mind if you want to create the life that you want. Do not let the voice inside of your head win. You have to figure out a way to get rid of it and to defeat it. There is no other option. You got to stop listening to it. And here's the thing. And at this point in time, maybe you live in fear a lot. Like maybe you live in fear and there's so much fear in your life. And it might be if you were say on a scale of one to 10, the fear might be like so loud. The little voice inside of your head is so loud. The goal, once again, it's not gonna, you're never gonna completely get rid of it, but it's, you're just trying to turn it down a little bit. Like, can you find the knob, the fear knob, the little, little bitch knob, and just turn down the little bitch knob just a teeny tiny bit, just a little teeny tiny bit. The difference between someone who's got the life that they have and someone who doesn't have the life they have, well, number one, they both have that voice inside of their head. The difference is who listens to it and who does it. The people who don't have the life that they have, they want, usually, don't have the life that they want simply because they keep listening to that voice. The person who does have the life that they want, or they're at least on the path, and they're getting closer to having the life that they want, they still have that voice inside of their head. They have just simply trained themselves to stop listening to that little voice. You can't outthink your mind. That's the funny thing about it. One of the things, I, I had somebody one time, they were talk, <laughs> talking about their insecurities or limiting beliefs to me one time. And he said, you know what? I just think I need to think about my limiting beliefs for a little while. I'm like, that's the worst idea ever. Because thinking about your limiting beliefs is not going to make your limiting beliefs better. Do you want to know what makes your limiting beliefs better? Taking action against those limiting beliefs. So if your limiting beliefs are, I don't think that I'm worthy in some sort of way, well, maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to force myself to take action to start being more worthy. I'm going to start forcing myself to go to the gym. I'm going to start forcing myself to, to start eating healthier and to start building the body and the mind that I want to in order to prove to myself that I am worthy of happiness, of love and success. I'm going to prove to myself that if I set my mind to something, I can accomplish it. And then slowly but surely, the actions that I have been taking turn my limiting beliefs down. You can't think your way out of limiting beliefs. You've got to take action out of your limiting beliefs. And when the little voice pops up inside of your head, the fears, the insecurities, You've got to take action against them, not be paralyzed by them. If you're paralyzed by them, they win, but you've got to take action against them, knowing that that's what you're going to have to do in order to create the life that they want. There's a great book uh, called The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. The obstacle that's in front of you, that your mind and your body present to you or the universe presents to you is the way to get to where you want to go. You've got to go through that thing. The universe will present people, places, and things in front of you to show you where you're not free and where you're triggered. And so it's not, oh, I'm going to succeed in spite of my mom or my dad or my family. It's I'm going to succeed by, going th by working through that. So instead of just throwing them off to the side and going, well, I'm gonna succeed, screw them. I don't have to worry about them. 
Your way to success, your biggest opportunity for growth is actually through that relationship. Working on that relationship is your next level of growth. The obstacle is the way. It is literally showing you what you need to work on. Most people try to avoid the obstacles. They try to avoid the triggers, but that is literally showing you what you need to work on. You can't not listen to it. You gotta listen to it. If you continue to avoid it and avoid it and avoid it, it's just gonna get worse and worse and worse. So when the voice pops up in your head, don't negotiate with it. You have to go through that little voice. It's gonna tell you you're not good enough. It's gonna tell you you're not smart enough. It's gonna tell you that you're not pretty. It's gonna tell you that you're not worthy of love. It's gonna tell you that you're not worthy of making $200,000 a year. It's gonna tell you that you're not worthy of having a beautiful family. It's gonna tell you that you're not worthy of uh, a family that doesn't have struggles like it did when you were growing up. It's gonna tell you all of those things, but you have to go through that because that is your biggest area of growth. Your comfort zone is what that thing is trying to keep you in. And your comfort zone is where all of your dreams go to die. All of your dreams go to die in your comfort zone, simply because all of your dreams are outside of your comfort zone. So you've got to push past it. You can't wait until you're comfortable. You can't wait until you're ready. What you have to do is you have to jump off the ledge, just knowing that the parachute's going to pop up. You don't know if you have a parachute on, but you just got to know that the parachute will be there. You can't wait till you're ready. The time will never be perfect. The only time is now. It's so funny. So many people send me messages and they're like, you know, I really want to create the life that I want to, but I'm so busy right now. So I think, I think I'm probably going to start my business in two months. I'm going to start my, my business that I want to succeed in, in two months. And then you follow up with them in another two months and like, oh my God, I got so busy again. And you follow up another two months, like, oh my God, I got so busy again. Do you know, want to know why it seems like there's less to do in two months? Because it's two months away. That's why. If you look at my schedule this week, it's a whole hell of a lot busier than it is two months from now. But guess what? Two months from now, my schedule is going to look very similar to what it does this week. You always feel busier in the present moment than you do in the future. So if you pass off your dreams to the future, your future is going to look exactly the same as your current reality. You're still going to be busy in the future. And so why do I say this? Because the only time to take action is now. Stop acting like you're going to do it tomorrow. Stop acting like you're going to do it next week. Stop acting like you're going to do it next month. Your comfort zone is where your dreams go to die. Your brain is literally putting these things in front of you to make you think that you're busy, to make you think that you don't have enough time, to make you think that now's not the right time to take action, to make you think that you're not good enough. Your subconscious is literally putting roadblocks in front of you. And if you listen to those roadblocks, your life is going to be exactly the same 10 years from today as it is right now. I've got a, I've got a question for it. I want you to really think about this. How long have you been stuck in your current comfort zone? I ask this when I give speeches sometimes and I say, hey, how long have you been stuck in your current comfort zone? Raise your hand if you want to tell me. It's always like a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 17 years, 54 years. I'm like, you know you're in it. How much longer are you going to stay there? Are you just going to stay in your comfort zone forever? You know you're in a comfort zone. So either you stay there, and if you do stay there, your life is going to be exactly the same a year from now, 10 years from now, as it is right now, you're just gonna look older. So why don't you just take action now instead? What you have to do is you have to look for your discomfort. As a lot of people say, you need to seek discomfort. Why? Because when you're seeking things that you're not comfortable with, you're constantly pushing the boundaries of your comfort zone. Your goal is to expand your comfort zone as much as possible. And the beautiful thing about this is that until the day you die, your brain is constantly changing. They used to think that you were born with a certain amount of neurons and a certain amount of connections in your brain. Your brain was that way and it was just gonna be that way and it was gonna slowly get worse and worse throughout your life. But there's proof now to show that your brain goes through neuroplasticity, which is the constant art of changing all of the time, if you're pushing the boundaries and doing something different. If you're doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, your brain's not gonna change because there's no reason to change. But if you're constantly doing something different, constantly seeking discomfort, constantly doing something that you've never done and then pushing the boundaries, your brain is constantly going to be changing. Your brain doesn't change when it does the same thing over and over again. Your brain only changes when it does something different. That's what I want you to realize. Your brain creates thoughts. Your thoughts create feelings. Your feelings create action or lack of action and your action creates results and your results create your life. You either create the exact same life that you've always had or by pushing your edge of your comfort zone, you're your life literally starts to change because you're doing things that you've never done before. If you, you know, as Einstein says, to do the same thing over and over again, expect different results is insanity. Stop 
doing the same things. You've got to stop negotiating with your mind. You've got to dominate the little voice inside of you. You've got to realize your fears aren't going to go away. Your insecurities aren't going to go away. What you have to do is take action against them and do the exact opposite of what they tell you to do. And then your life will be different. Every decision that you make is either based out of fear or it's based out of personal power. So it's either fear or it's power. Those are the two places that you can make decisions from. There are no other places you can make decisions. The problem though, is that at least for me, most of my life until I realized this is that most of my decisions were made out of fear, which is also called scarcity. I was in a scarcity mode. I wasn't raised with a whole lot. I didn't know anything about business. I didn't know anything about growing a business or growing a podcast or growing stuff. And so a lot of my decisions that I've made in my life were based out of fear even though I felt like I should probably make a different decision. You know, when I look back on my entire life, most of them were made out of fear. And so what I want you to think about for yourself, if you look back on your entire life and all of the things that you've done and all of the decisions that you've made, have they been based out of power, of a place of personal power and stepping into your personal power? Or have they been made from a place of fear, of scarcity? Have they been made from a place of Oh yeah, I won't do this because it costs too much money. I won't invest into myself because it costs more money. I won't start that business because I know it's going to cost me money to do. You know, those are based out of fear. And when we talk about fear, you have to realize that fear is a good thing and fear is also a bad thing because fear will show you the edge of your comfort zone and show you where you're on the edge of your comfort zone. So if you want to push past it, you continue to keep going or fear if you listen to it is a bad thing because it will keep you in the exact same place that you're in. And fear was a great thing for our ancestors. It kept them alive a hundred thousand years ago when they had to be fearful of possibly walking by a bush and a lion being in there. So that fear kept our species alive. But now today, fear is actually one of the things that holds people back the most. And you may have heard me talk about it. I had a psychedelic journey a few years ago where I really realized that fear is the worst thing in the world because without fear, if we had no fear, there wouldn't be any wars. There wouldn't be any killings. There wouldn't be people that were looking at people that didn't look like them or act like them and, and hating them. Fear holds people back from making a true connection and really growing, but also fear holds people back from starting the business that could possibly change the world or cure cancer or be able to change global warming. They're just too fearful of actually taking that step. So if fear were not there, this place could be amazing. This could be a utopia. This could be just an amazing place that we could live in, but fear holds us back. When I look back on my life, a lot of my decisions were made in fear. What I realized is I got to a point in my life where I looked at my life and I didn't have the life that I wanted. I knew that there was more. And I knew that if I wanted to create the life that I wanted to create, I would have to step out of fear. I would feel the fear but I would have to continue do it and doing it anyways. My decisions were all made to keep me in my comfort zone at its simplest form to keep me in the exact same position that I always was in. Why does it come from fear? Because like I said, fear is the thing that kept us alive. But the part that existed in our ancestors 100,000, 200,000 years ago in their brains still exists in our brains today. It's the amygdala. It's this little tiny thing and that's where all of your fears come from. It keeps you alive. It is a great thing. But when there are no nothing to fear about, like lions attacking you or running out of food or running out of water or, you know, a animal attacking your child, when you have all of those gone, your brain still has the amygdala and that amygdala will then create fears that don't even exist. Let me ask you something. Have you ever had, you know, a moment of silence and you're sitting around and you're quiet and your brain just immediately goes to fears. It goes to fear base. It starts making things up that don't even exist. That's what happens is a brain that's that you don't pay attention to will automatically go to fear. So how can you stop going to fear and everything that you do? And this is why it's very, very important for you, for me, for all of us, for every single person to become very self-aware. And I want you to think about all of the great decisions that have happened in this world, all of the amazing things that have changed the, the course of history. Think about all those great decisions. Now I want to ask you a question. How many of those great decisions do you think came from a place of fear? Don't worry, I'll give you a second. How many came from a place of fear? Probably none of them, right? I don't mean fear of death. I don't mean fear of like, of, of being attacked. I mean, fear of, of, I don't know if I can do it. Maybe I shouldn't do it. Maybe I should do this instead. I don't think that any great business, any Nobel prize winner, any of those things came from a place of fear. All of those came from some place of personal power. 
And these decisions are the decisions that we have that can completely change the course of our lives and the people's lives around us. And I'm not saying when I'm, when I'm, when I'm talking about this, I'm not saying that you have to change the world. I'm just saying that you have to change your life. These decisions of fear will make us play small. They will make us not live up to our potential. They will make us afraid of rejection. They will make us afraid of other people's opinions. They will make us afraid of what might happen if we step into the unknown. Those are all decisions that keep us playing small and they keep us taking the safe route and they keep us staying inside of our comfort zone. And you might be out there and you might have this amazing business idea that could completely change your life and maybe change the course of history and it's out there and you have this idea and it's there and it's so close, but there's a feeling inside of your head of like, well, what if I, what if I mess up? What if I, what if I make an embarrassment of myself? What if I make an embarrassment of my family? And those thoughts will keep you from changing the world. Now let's go on an even, even smaller scale. Maybe you have this feeling of you want to go start a business and you're not sure what the business is, but you have this feeling of, I want to go start a business. But the fear is actually even keeping you from going out and trying new things. It's keeping you from going out and going to conferences that interest you to see what you can find out. That fear, if you didn't have it, could get you to start your, if you didn't have it and you started to a place of power, you could go out and you could learn something new. You could start a business and maybe that business doesn't change the course of history. Maybe it doesn't change the world, but maybe it changes your life. And if you have kids or you have a spouse or you plan on having kids and a spouse later on down the road, that will change their world. And so it's not about changing the entire world, but can you change your world, which will eventually change other people's world as well. It's also another thing of like stepping into, you know, your own personal development and investing into that. I always talk about it all the time. One of the biggest moments of my life was when I invested into my first coach and paid $500 a month. I could have not paid him $500 a month because I didn't have it because I didn't, I put it onto a credit card, but there was something inside of me that said I should do it. And that was me stepping into a place of personal power going, you know what? I don't like where I am. I don't want to be here anymore and I'm not going to be here anymore. And I'm going to do something different. That thought, that feeling completely changed the course of my life. And I wouldn't be doing what I do right now. I wouldn't be speaking to you, whether this is through a podcast, whether this is through YouTube or whether it's through Facebook or Instagram, I would not be speaking to you right now if I didn't hire that guy and that changed my life. And hopefully it's changing your life in some sort of way as well. You know, how many, how many great decisions came from a place of no risk? Oh, I'm not going to risk it. Here's the thing in life. And this is one of my favorite quotes. If you don't risk anything, you risk everything. If you don't risk anything in your life and you play your entire life safe and you play scared and you play inside of your comfort zone, you risk everything. You risk an amazing life. You risk all of the happiness and joy and the true potential and the wealth that you could get and the way that you could change your family's life by that wealth. You risk everything when you decide in your life that you're not going to risk anything. How many people do you look up to in your life? Amazing people that change the world that do you think just didn't live in their personal power? Very few, right? Probably none. How many great inventions and companies came from a place of fear? None. So what should we be focused on? We talked a lot about fear. What should we be focused on is we should be focused on our personal power, stepping into a place where we know it's going to cause the greatest growth, greatest growth for ourselves. Is it going to be easy? No. Is it going to be uncomfortable? Yes. But is it going to help us grow? Absolutely. So that is what we need to be focused on. Stepping into who you could be and ultimately who you should be more than anything else. Will there be risk? Absolutely. There's gonna be tons of risks. There's gonna be tons of failures. You're gonna f up a lot of stuff, but that doesn't matter. What matters is who you come out on the other side. And it's the difference between your gut feeling and your brain feeling. Your gut feeling and your brain. Your brain is a, and you've heard me say this a million times, your brain is designed to do one thing and one thing only, and that is to keep you safe. Your brain is literally a fear-based mechanism. It's what it does. It creates fear so that therefore it keeps you alive and keeps you inside of your comfort zone. But your gut feeling is that feeling deep down inside of your soul of like, I feel like I'm supposed to do this. And the tragedy of life is that too many people don't listen to that gut feeling and they don't step into their personal power. They don't step into who they could be. They don't step into their true potential. And then ultimately they get to the end of their life and they really regret that they didn't do what they ultimately should have done. They listen to fear more than they listen to their personal power. Everything that you want to do is going to require you to at some point step into a place of personal power. And you need to become very aware of when your gut feeling is pulling you towards something, when it's driving you towards something, or when you are coiling back and you're coming from a place of fear and you're not making that decision. And once again, I said this a minute ago, it's gonna require you to become 
very, very self-aware of what's going on. And that's the first thing that you need to realize is that you need to become self-aware whenever you feel a certain way to take a step back, get out of the jar so you can read the label, you know, literally look at yourself as if you're a different person, take out a pen and paper and say, what am I feeling right now? You know what? I'm feeling pretty fearful. Okay. Why am I fearing fearful fear? Why am I feeling fearful right now? I'm feeling fearful because I feel like I don't want to work at my job anymore and I want to go start a business. Okay. Why does that scare me? Write down all the reasons why it scares you. It's okay to write down all the reasons why it scares you. And then you can also write down, but what if I succeed? What will happen? Oh, I could have this. I could have this. I could create this. I could impact these people's lives. I could start a charity. I could have so much money to donate. And you start to realize when you take everything out of your head and you put onto a piece of paper that you could coil away, you could listen to the fear, but then you could fast forward 20 years from now and see what your life would look like if you decided to follow that route. So you ask yourself the question, what would my life look like if I decided to not do this? 20 years from now, if I fast forward, what will my, my, my life look like if I don't do this? I'll probably be in the same position, making a little bit more money. I'll probably not be as happy as I could be. In fact, I'll probably be less happy because I know that I'm not living up to my full potential. Okay. If I were to, to step into my personal power and decide to start this business, knowing it's going to be hard, knowing there's going to be unknowns, knowing I'm going to screw things up and I'm going to mess it up and I'm going to fail over and over again. But if I do fast forward of what my life could be like in 20 years, what could my life look like? Oh my gosh, I could impact these people. I could change my life. I could feel better of myself. I could finally feel confident of what it is that I do. And when you break it down and you start to look at your life as if you're planning a business, like if you're going to start a business, you're going to have a business plan, right? And what are you going to do? You're going to have your business plan in your head? No, you're going to write down the things that you're needing to do or that you need to do to grow your marketing and grow your sales and grow your revenue and create the products. You're going to write it all down on a piece of paper. Why is it any different with planning out where your life is going? If you're thinking about your life too much, you're going down the wrong route. You need to start planning out your life. Act like it's a business. Okay, what if I do decide to go out and take this path in my life, what can my life look like? What, what challenges could come up if I go this route? What could I do to make sure that I, I mitigate the risk with all of these challenges? So therefore I can work through them. What if my mom does say this about me? Well, if she does say it about me. That's her own opinion, but I'm going to go through this route because it feels like it's what I'm supposed to be. So that's the first thing is become very self-aware to take yourself out of the jar and read the label to put everything that's happening in your head on a piece of paper and work through them as if it was a business plan. And the second thing is to start becoming comfortable living on the edge of your comfort zone. If you've never lived on the edge of your comfort zone before, then it's going to be hard for you in the beginning. But once you've done this enough, it feels uncomfortable. Instead of it, instead of it feeling uncomfortable to live on your comfort zone, it feels uncomfortable to not be uncomfortable. If that makes sense where comfort actually is uncomfortable because you know that it's not what you should be doing. You know that it's holding you back. You know that it's not giving you the life that you want. And so what you do is you actually start to find the edge of your comfort zone and you start to know what that feels like. You know what the fear popping up feels like, but you decide not to listen to it. And what you do when you get to the edge of your comfort zone, instead of backing away, is you start to lean in and go, this is showing me where I am not free. I am stuck in this comfort zone. And if I want to create something amazing in my life, I'm going to have to lean into this just a little bit. And then what I want you to do is I want you to fast forward your life and think into the future. If you continue to make decisions out of fear for the next five years, what is your life going to look like in five years? If you continue to make decisions out of fear over the next 20 years, what is your life going to look like in 20 years? Are you going to look at it and go, man, I'm so excited about this life. I'm so proud of it. My children are going to be so proud of me that the life that I lived in fear for the past 20 years, what would your life look like if you lived in fear for the next five years, for the next 20 years, fast forward yourself and see it. And if it's painful, let it be painful because sometimes that pain is needed for you to make a change. And then what I want you to do is I want you to start to write down what could my life look like if I stepped into my personal power for the next five years, what could my life look like if I stepped into my personal power for the next 20 years? If I leaned on the edge of my comfort zone and I pushed past it constantly and pushed past it constantly and I felt the fear, but I did it anyways, what could my life look like? And you start to plan ahead and you start to realize that if you're going to step into your own personal power, you've got to learn to work with fear. Fear is always going to be present. It's always going to be there. It's never going to go away. You just become more comfortable with it being there. It's just like that awkward person sitting in the corner of the room. It's always going to be there, but just because he's talking to you doesn't mean that you have to listen to him. You can put on your headphones and start going to the path that you want to. So if you want to create a life 
that steps into your personal power. You've got to start following it. You've got to start planning it out. You've got to become very aware when you're starting to be pulled back into fear. And then just like a business plan, write out what's going on and how you can get past it. And if you do that, that is how you create the life that you want to over the next five years, the next 10 years, the next 20 years. And until the day you die, when you get to that deathbed, you'll be proud of what you created versus not happy about what it ended up looking like. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. How many life-changing decisions could you have made in your life that you decided to play safe instead of deciding to step up into your own personal power?